Free the Truth was created about uh, close to four years ago as a space for ordinary people to understand what was going on in relation to whistleblowing, human rights and press freedom in Britain and around the world. We started with a wonderful event that Craig joined us at here um, in 2019, not long after Julian Assange was dragged out of the embassy and jailed in Belmarsh prison. My co-host, Professor Ian Munro and I, saw this as taking our academic work into a, a more real world space to allow us to debate different points of view with, with candor, with respect, and with integrity. I'm so grateful to see you all here today. Thank you so much. I know we have people in the audience from Norway, Germany, from various other parts of the world who have traveled over specifically to be with us here. We are also joined today, thanks to the wonderful camera people you see here and those restreaming online by people in the US and in other parts of the world, far across the seas, who, who care about what we care about, which is justice, peace and equality. And to have justice, peace and equality, we need truth. Truth is the fundamental for that. And it is that truth that we are seeking to defend today in defending the right of Julian Assange to serve as a journalist and a publisher and tell the truth about US war crimes. War crimes like the murders, the rape, the torture, the destruction of civilization that we've seen, as well as the war on terror, the impact of the war on terror, that saw what you see around the room today, documented by those who suffered at Guantanamo. So around the room you will see art from Guantanamo and the various prints. These were drawn by the people who were kept prisoner without trial or charge. Mansoor Adaifi, whose work is on stage, went in as a teenager. He was there for 14 years. And his painting is the story of life and death separated by a thin line called hope. And his piece, he says, talks about the fact that the US cannot keep people dead in Guantanamo, or essentially living but dead in Guantanamo, while continuing to, you know, we, we, we in Europe, we in the US cannot keep people dead while continuing to cherish our lives. Because our lives are incomplete and not alive unless those around us are alive and happy too. And it is in this spirit that I welcome you and some of our very esteemed guests in the audience, including the wonderful Selma James, who is here from the long-standing campaign for justice for women and for racial justice and indeed for societal justice. So I'm very grateful to her and to Lisa, who was here at our first event speaking. And to all of you in the audience, many of whom I know for your work and your contributions to society, so I'm going to stop talking now and let you hear our wonderful speakers. And I'm going to try and resume my place without tripping over something first. <laughs> <laughs>